I'm sure you've all heard of Alienware, which is a well-known brand in high-end PC and gaming domains. Some of you probably know that Alienware is actually owned by Dell, which is more than well-known since it represents one of the biggest names in PC industry. Beside gaming monitors under the Alienware brand, Dell also makes models under its own name, one of which we had a chance to test over the last week. Dell monitors have a good reputation and it was interesting to see their take on a real gaming model under the main Dell brand. In this case, it's the Dell S3220DGF, a 32-inch model with an interesting combination of specs such as WQHD resolution, 165Hz refresh rate, large curved VA panel, and FreeSync Premium Pro and HDR400 certification. Sounds good? Let's see how it actually performs. On the outside, this monitor certainly looks different than the recent Alienware models. Even though we liked the Alienware design, we are aware that it may not be everyone's cup of tea, and Dell probably thought the same and stuck to a more traditional design, quite recognizable one which we know from various Dell devices. A combination of dark grey and black plastic gives this monitor a discreet and serious look, maybe not quite office, but certainly one that you'll associate more with work than fun. A stand is quite stable and allows for panel rotation by 30 degrees left and right, flexible height adjustment by 13.7 cm, as well as tilt by 5 degrees down and 21 degrees up. Pivot is absent, as is usually the case with curved panels, and near the bottom of the stand you'll also find a hole used for cable management. Panel bezels are thin, with an additional margin, which is pretty standard solution found on many modern monitors. Curiously, the bottom bezel fits snug against the right bezel, while it has 1mm gap on the left and looks like someone typed in a wrong measure while designing the parts. Considering the pretty high quality build and how firm everything seems, this detail is a weird curiosity more than it has any impact on the looks or functionality. The outer edge of the monitor is lined with vent holes that allow for cooling of electronics in the panel, while the back side of the monitor looks pretty clean with a curved contour that follows the panel itself. The connectors are placed in a usual spot on the bottom where you'll find DisplayPort 1.4, two HDMI 2.0, as well as two 3.5mm audio outputs, three USB 3.0 ports for connecting devices and one for connection with the PC. Perhaps the only complaint about the design would be the absence of a mini joystick since controlling the menu is done via six keys plus one for turning the monitor on and off. To be fair, unlike many similar solutions, which tend to be painfully confusing, Dell menu is actually pretty simple and well organized, with icons displayed along the bottom of the panel, right above the corresponding key, which makes the use fairly intuitive. Four of the keys are also programmable, so you can assign some of the commonly used functions, which is a useful detail. Speaking of menus, since this is a gaming monitor, it also has some specific functions we saw on some Alienware models, such as preset timer, FPS counter and black level adjustment which allows for easier spotting of the enemies, but lacks crosshair display which may have been more useful. The panel is probably the most interesting aspect of this model and looks quite impressive at first glance with its 32 inches and the curve which makes a lot of sense of this size. The curve in this case seems quite natural, requires no adjustment period, and even helps get more of the screen in your field of view, thus making a panel, which would otherwise be perhaps a bit too big for gaming, quite acceptable. At a relatively short viewing distance of a regular computer desk, we were able to play some esports games like Apex Legends and Call of Duty Warzone quite comfortably, and had no impression that the size of the screen impacted our performance during gaming. Speaking of which, we should mention the performance of the panel, which is VA, a type that is usually not associated with fast response time. In this case, Dell implemented the refresh rate of 165Hz, as well as very effective overdrive settings, so with the response time option set to extreme, the panel's response is surprisingly fast for VA, with minimal ghosting behind fast moving objects, about the level of some gaming IPS models. Since the monitor supports a variable refresh rate between 48 and 165 Hz, we should note that this response is seen near the upper limit of 165, while things change at lower refresh rates when the ghosting becomes more pronounced and on the level we expect from VA panel, especially in darker parts of the scene. Therefore, it is a good idea to pair this monitor with a sufficiently powerful PC capable of using its specs to the max. Speaking of variable refresh rates, Dell S3220 DGF is not officially G-Sync compatible, though during our tests it worked perfectly fine with our NVIDIA graphics card and G-Sync on. What is officially supported is the AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, which is a new name for FreeSync 2, a combination of variable refresh rate, HDR support and HDR mapping done by the GPU, which allows for lower input lag while playing HDR games. 
Now in this case HDR is not going to blow you away since the monitor only supports the basic HDR400 standard with maximum brightness rated at 400 nits, so the difference between SDR and the HDR modes is not very noticeable. On the plus side we measured a superb input lag of only 8.2 milliseconds in SDR, which if not the best is certainly one of the best scores we've ever got on any monitor. As for the image quality, a resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels is a welcome feature considering the screen size, since anything less would make for a problematic pixel size. WQHD is a fair compromise between a good image sharpness and hardware requirements. You will still need a strong PC to play games at close to 160 FPS in this resolution, but nowhere near what the 4K would require, which would be too much even for the best PCs currently out there. Since this is a V8 panel, the contrast is not only expectedly high, but actually very good, measured at 4000 to 1, which also contributes to a good visual impression. Also, the curve mitigates the problem with viewing angles associated with this type of panel, so in real use you will probably have no complaints regarding that. One negative side of the curve is the backlight uniformity, which gets a bit brighter towards the corners, but it's only noticeable on a black screen and when viewed in total dark. As for the color display, we should know that this is a 10-bit panel, well, 8 bits plus FRC to be exact, which is to be expected given the monitor's HDR certification, so it's able to display a pretty good 88.3% of DCI-P3 color gamut. Inside the menu you will find predefined picture modes which are suited for different game genres and use scenarios, and the most accurate of them is the custom color mode with no additional tweaking, in which we measure the delta E deviation of 3, a borderline value which is still considered a good accuracy. In this mode we also measure the highest brightness value, a not very impressive 269.4 nits, which is probably the reason why HDR on this monitor looks no better than the standard dynamic range mode. Overall, Dell 3220 DGF is an interesting gaming monitor, which with its large curved screen and quite good performance leaves a very good impression in all games. If you own a sufficiently powerful PC able to run modern games in WQHD resolution with a frame rate close to 165 FPS, you will undoubtedly enjoy gaming on this monitor. With its size and high contrast, Dell 3220 DGF is also a great choice for multimedia and movie enjoyment, while decent color accuracy along with other features also makes it a very usable professional monitor. All this comes at a price, which in this case is about $500 on Amazon. That would be all for this review and we hope you'll join us in the comment section and share your thoughts on this monitor. If you enjoyed this video please show your support by leaving a like and maybe consider subscribing to our channel for more interesting content. You were watching Bench House, my name is Ivan and I'll see you next time.